There are multiple ways to create instances in Blender. The traditional option is to use parenting and instancing, which we discussed earlier. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create instances using geometry nodes. There are two different ways again within these nodes, we'll discuss both of them, along with their mutual advantage or disadvantage as well. So let us start with a blank new file. We'll delete this default cube and instead, we can add one simple plane. Let us enlarge it by a scale of 5. Our target is to create instances on this plane, so in the first method, we have to first subdivide this plane sufficiently. So go to the Modifiers tab and add one Subdivision Surface Modifier. Switch over to the Simple option. Then increase the levels, maybe up to 3, and apply the modifier. In the wireframe view mode, you can see that we have got 64 sections here, and we'll create instances for each of these cells. If you want to create more instances, you need to subdivide it further. Now, we want to use the geometry nodes for our instances. So, let us reuse this timeline editor. We have to change this editor type to geometry nodes. Let's hide this side panel and click on new to get our basic input output nodes. If you are new to geometry nodes, you can first check our foundation level tutorial on this, where we have discussed the basic things in geometry node editor with suitable examples. The link is given below. So we get the geometry of this plane in this group input. Now, go to the add menu and then under mesh, select the node mesh to points and place that node over here. So we get our mesh converted into all these individual points. We'll now create one instance at each of these points. So again go to the Add menu, and under the Instances group, select Instance on Points, and place it after the Mesh to Points node. But we don't see here anything just yet, because we have to first add something to this Instance field. Blender will then know that it has to create instances of that particular object. So, go to the Add menu, and let us add one, Icosphere. We want to create instances of this sphere, on this plane. So on the Geometry node, go to the Add menu, then Input group, and add one, Object Info node, and place it somewhere here. Then from this drop-down, we have to select the Icosphere. Now connect its Geometry output to the Instance field of our Instancing node. And we get the instances created at each point on the plane, but they are too big in size. So we have to reduce these scale factors. Let us change them to point 0.1. Now it looks good, we can see each instance separately, on each of the points that we created for the plane. If you want, you can now hide this sphere. The instances that we created in this way, they all share the same mesh data, and the same material as well. Now in order to get back our original plane, we have to bring this group input geometry, to this group output node, as you may know. So go to the add menu, then under geometry, add a join geometry node, and we have to place it here. Now connect the group input node to this join geometry, and our original plane will come back. Right now, we have got one instance of the sphere at each vertex point of the plane. But you can change this as per your requirement. In the mesh to points node, if you change this option from vertices to faces, the points and the instances both will be created on each face of the plane. But sometimes, a simple distribution like this may not be useful. You may need some random instances scattered over some random points on this plane. You can also do that easily by adding some random input value connected to this selection field of the instancing node. So go to the Add menu, and from the Utilities, add a random value node. Let us place it somewhere over here. Then change this type field from float to boolean and connect this value output to the selection field of the instance node. So you'll get these instances created at some random locations. You can change this probability field to increase or decrease the number of instances to be created on the plane. And this seed field controls the pattern of the random distribution. You can change this field and the instance pattern will change. This is an easy technique to create scattered objects like stones or rocks but very soon we'll come up with a separate tutorial on that. So this was the first technique to create instances using the geometry nodes. Now in the second method, we'll create some instances on this icosphere. So as usual, we need to open a separate editor. Then change this to geometry nodes. And click on the new button to create a basic input output tree. Now in the add menu, 
Go to Mesh, and select this Distribute Points on Faces, and place it right here. So you'll get some points, created at random like this, on all over the mesh surface. But we also need the original sphere to be here, so we need to join this group input node with the group output. This is same as before, we need to add a join geometry node to be placed here. Now connect the group input node to its input side. You can now see how the points are distributed all over the surface of the icosphere. So, although this node says distribute points on faces, it distributes the points all over the mesh surface, it does not really care about the faces. The points can fall on the vertices or on the edges, just anywhere. We'll now create instances on these points. So go to the Add menu, and like before, under the Instances group, select Instance on Points, and place it after the Distribute Points node. So the points are getting created through this node, then we get instances on those points, which is then going to the final geometry. Now, we need a second object, which will be instantiated on these points. So go to the Add menu, and let us add one, Cone. Now select our icosphere. We need to add the cone to this instance field, to create its instances. So we need to add an object info node over here. Or, you can simply click on this cone, then drag and drop it on this editor. You'll get the same object info node pre-filled with the cone. Now connect its geometry output to the instance field of this node. We got the instances, but they are too big in size. So let us resize them, maybe by a factor of 0.1. Now the instances are looking better, compared to the sphere. You can hide the original cone, since it is not needed. The second thing you'll notice is, the instances are all pointed straight upward, which looks bad, so you may want them to be perfectly aligned with the face normals. And that is where you'll find this second method actually very handy. We have a field called rotation here, in the distribute points node. You have to just connect this to the rotation input of the instancing node. And the instances will now follow the face normals, giving an outward orientation, which looks very perfect. You can also change the number of instances by changing this density field. Let's say we change this value to 40. We'll get many more instances created from our cone object. Or, we can use a higher value, like 100. The sphere will get crowded with numerous instances, but some will now start overlapping with each other. You can use a value that suits your requirement. And in fact, you need to first decide which method to be used for instancing within the geometry nodes. Both the methods are good, because in this first method, you can place the instances perfectly wherever you need them, either on the faces, or on the vertices. You can even place them randomly, and there is no overlapping ever. But the orientations may not be always correct, since there is no direct way to sync up with the face normals. You can do that by creating some complex node tree, but no easy way. On the other hand, in this second method, you can easily align the instances to their face normals, but the distribution is controlled by a random number, which is not entirely in your hand, and objects have high chance of overlapping. You cannot control their positions explicitly. So both the methods are good, but they have separate use cases, they are useful for separate scenarios. We'll talk about the applications of instancing in future classes. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.